missing a wonderful son, brother, friend, and uh, today's no exception. It's difficult to represent Nick's life in just these, these few days, these few moments. And he had more friends than anyone I've ever met before, but the thing about him was he always had room for one more, and chances are it might have been one of you. We really wanted to, to make this season for Nick. Um, me especially, being so close to him, and just thinking what he could have been and how good he would have been if he was still with us. Nick beat to his own drum, and he was very comfortable on his own skin, which leads me to my favorite part about Nick Galvin, his faith. And I know that because I watched Nick live for Christ alone. Lon, yeah, I just, I don't want to let you guys know that you guys did a great job of raising your boy to love the Lord. You really did. Um, and the reason I know that is because there's kids in this room today that wouldn't know Jesus Christ if it wasn't for Nick. This bunch is special. This, this bunch has been through probably as much adversity as a class. Losing, losing Nick as sophomore is traumatic. Um, and then the number of teammates that just decided not to play. And so their, their class went from a pretty large class to actually a very small class. class that was kind of beat and beaten and battered and and uh, roughed up a little bit and, and they like I said the ones that remain were, were the right ones. So, I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> this is the official look of Islander weights. This is how you come every single morning. <laughs> Top of the morning. You know, the ones that we had remaining were the right ones. I mean, that's the bottom line. We didn't have everybody, but we had the right ones uh, left at the end because those are the kids who came back every day. It's one of the areas where, because of what we have with Coach Swanson and the job he does and Coach Tomlin, uh, because of those guys, we are able to, year in and year out, be highly competitive even in years where maybe from a talent standpoint, there are teams in Omaha and Lincoln that have guys who are a little bigger, a little faster. That's the greatest team builder we have. Islander Power, the, the spending the sweat, equity, investing that equity, and spending day after day together in the weight room is the best team builder we have. But the wood pile's still pretty tall. So we've got a lot of wood to chop yet to get where we want to get by the time August 7th rolls around, where I think we're on track. We're doing some great, great things. Uh, doing some really good things. Uh, the good thing about July, once it rolls around, once we come back, time is short, but really there's very few distractions other than training and becoming, becoming that stronger link in the chain, right? And making your teammates better. There are very few other distractions. Uh, June's heavy with camps. It's heavy with different commitments, all very necessary, all very good. 
July is more, we got to lock in and focus on team. Okay? And that's, that's our only thoughts is focusing on how I can make myself and my teammates better. It's a grind session. Yeah. You wake up, you don't know what he's going to throw at you. He's going to throw a storm at you at least once a week or maybe twice a week, three times a week. You're going to have a storm thrown at you. You go through a lot. Um, you go through, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it. So much stuff. That's why, I mean, everyone calls you crazy for doing it because lifting for Coach Swanson is different than being a part of lifting for football. The whole thing was kind of, kind of sucky. I personally think he thinks it's kind of funny to see us struggle, but he he wants us to grow and wants us to mentally be stronger. It's not necessarily the swiftest, the strongest, the most athletic who rise to the surface. It's the ones who are resilient, who are mentally and emotionally tough, who are willing to outwork and endure for the sake of a cause, who refuse to get beat, who refuse to lose, who have that, you know, I'm, I'm always in the fight mentality and mindset. All the stuff he makes you do, you wonder why every single day you go up there and why you walk out like this week, it's off season, and you can barely walk down the hallway or sit on the couch. That's supposed to be peaceful, but you can't even do that because it hurts to do anything. Uh, you have to be committed, loyal, and have a lot of passion for what you're doing. Yeah, we, we've got the basic recipe figured out, but Coach Swanson and I sit down every year. Obviously, Coach is the expert. Coach, what do we need to develop? Is it, is it hips this year? Is that where we're lacking? Do we need to be able to play lower? Is it upper body explosiveness? Is it, is it uh, uh, overall movement speed? And then we pattern our off-season programs off of what our basic needs are. You know, the core of it is gonna be discomfort because I don't, I don't know that you grow as a person unless you're uncomfortable, not just mentally, emotionally, but physically too. Physically, I think it's just brings people together. We know that. Well, you wanna see kids that are physically stronger, more explosive, able to move better, and that's, that's, that's obviously what most people think. It has so much more to do with becoming a better man and becoming a better teammate than it does with becoming stronger, and that's a big part of it too. It's an idea. That's what it is. It's an idea. It's, a, um, it's exceeding the standard. It's creating the best version of yourself every day. It's creating a team. My initial thought was they're good kids. They work really, really hard. But I wasn't real sure they really believed in themselves, and I wasn't sure that they really believed that they could, they could carry on with the mission that we have. And the second thing that springs from that uh, is leadership. I wanted to see some guys emerging as leaders. As a coaching staff, we feel like that if we don't have some leaders from the offensive and defensive line, it's, you know, that's usually not a good thing. We were blessed to come back with a lot of key players in the secondary. Um, we had some great play from obviously Colton Keyser and the outside backers. And those leaders kind of drove some of the juniors to really step up. And, and I've seen it every year I've been here where juniors answer the bell. But there were a lot of kids that I think if you had said before the season, hey, this kid's going to be a, a locked in starter performing well at the end of the year, it, it might have been a little iffy. but. Um, it's become so commonplace at GI that you don't, you're not surprised anymore when kids do that. They were put in a place where they had to stand up and in some cases be vocal, but they had to stand up and get something organized for me uh, because I would, I would organize pieces of the workout uh, that were somewhat open-ended, that were intentionally vague, that were intentionally not well-defined. I knew what I wanted to happen. Um, but I wanted them to figure out what to happen. The only true leader is a servant leader, and uh, that's something we try and instill in them. And uh, so you have to have kids and coaches who are willing to go counter our culture, which isn't the easiest to do all the time. The off season goes very quickly for me because I'm always chasing time. I feel like we're running out of time and we're not gonna be quite where we need to be. But yeah, time is uh, very quickly evaporating, fellas. That's, that's kind of the nature of time. So make the most out of every rep. Win every rep.
I love putting together a team. That that is the my favorite part of coaching is starting from scratch every year and assembling a team and implementing our culture and reinforcing our culture. The more our kids get involved in that culture, they realize um, I can have a big impact on the world around me. I can really lift a lot of people with me if I attain, if I aspire to that high, high standard. Watching kids develop you know, in, into something that, that's going to be really special and, and seeing leaders emerge. That's always, you know, one of my favorite parts. And obviously I love the season, uh, but it's the process leading up to the season that I'm, I'm in love with that process. And so I knew most of the summer, most of the things we did was going to be about leadership and it was about um, instilling a sense of confidence that, you know what, we're worthy. We can, we can be every bit as good as all the classes that came before us. Be intentional. It has to be intentional. It ain't just going to happen, right? You just don't show up in the weight room and go through the motions and become great. You've got to be intentional about it. You know what I'm saying? The rules and regulations of what we do here is the science of your body and training and how it functions. So yeah, I agree with Coach. As I'm looking at test results, the number one thing that pops into my head is not effort, but it's diet and nutrition. It's how you took care of your body. That's discipline. That's doing something because you know you have to do it because that's part of the rule book of how your body works. It's not a matter of, oh, I'll just go, I'll put on some ACDC and get all jacked up and I'll be ready to perform. No, you won't. Discipline. Discipline will allow you to perform. Discipline will allow you to do what you need to do when you're afraid, when you're outmanned, when the chips are down, when you're behind. It's discipline that will carry you through to the other side. Not motivation, not all this other stuff that can come and go. Because let's be honest, there's a lot of this that just sucks, doesn't it? So when it sucks and you don't want to, what pulls you? Discipline, you do it because you know it has to be done and it has to be done in a certain way. So the diet nutrition thing is gonna be very, very, very important, but it's also coming up here when you're tired from yesterday, maybe a little bit sore, and you think, wait a minute, this is, no, no. For me to hoist that trophy up, I've gotta follow the rules and regulations of how my body works and how this program needs to go in terms of football and strength and conditioning, right? Be disciplined. You know what needs to be done. Don't take it for granted. Do it. Under power, I mean. Extremely intense. Because when you get up there, it's just, it's all about the work. We are the literal definition of blood, sweat, and tears. If someone came to me and told me that under power was just conditioning, I'd tell them they're crazy. Sometimes it can be hell, you know, it's, but it's ultimately like the backbone of our football team, I'd say. That strength and that toughness that comes from it is really what gives us the edge in our competitions. Scary too, when he gets angry, which I've barely seen him get angry, but yeah, he's crazy. The whole thing kind of sucked, honestly. People look at it and they're like, oh, lifting's easy, and then you hit the weight room with Swanson and Coach T and you're like, uh, I don't want to do this anymore. We were a, for surely an undersized team compared to all of those all the other like metro like Omaha Lincoln areas but knowing the work we put in in the weight room kind of helped us compete with those teams and knowing that we were just as strong as those teams was a really big thing for us you know in all my years of experience um, and all the places that I've coached I've never coached in a you know a suburban school where you've got 200 plus kids out and and you're five deep at each position we're, we're we're not, uh, but we don't dwell on what we're not. 
what we are is very efficient in what we do, uh, very versatile, highly skilled, highly trained, very tough. And so the, the demands are high because that's what it takes to compete in our league. You got to get your lunch pail and take it to work every day. I mean, I don't, you don't want to be the guy that's everything's given to you. You want to work for what you got and you see the guys working and you're working and it's all intense. It's so, especially with the football guys, there's no room to mess around. One, two, three, five, one. for surely not a fun day for us. And this year we had uh, a bunch of Marines come out and uh, they've been really, really good. They want to be part of the program and part of the community. So it's like, yeah, you can. And, and all we've said is, is we want this to really focus on team and leadership. We knew it was going to be pretty hard and we knew we had to have each other's back because going through that by yourself was, would be really hard. So we knew we had to have each other's back. And I know the things they're doing boot camp that that force people to work together, that force people to lift each other up and to contribute what they can. It was a long session. Going from like burpee broad jumps and then you gotta build a house, you, it's, it takes every single guy. You have to stay up on your hands and your feet and it, it's like every guy just going under you, going under you, going under you. We want them to understand how important the guy next to them is and we want them to understand how important they are in the chain. You know, one link breaks, the whole chain is useless. Okay, you guys know we demand motivation, right? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, anytime we're talking to you, anytime we're talking to you, if we ask you a question, if I ask you, hey, good to go? You're gonna say yes, kill. Good to go? Yes, sir. All right, we'll wake you guys up. Begin. 
Spread your arms, spread your legs, cross each other's arms and legs, support each other. You are okay. Turn your mind off. You're fine. You're okay. Don't panic. That way, fellas. There you go. These guys got figured out. Let's go. Hey, squeeze it in. Eric, move it over. You have to communicate with each other. If you don't communicate with each other, you don't know what's going on with your team. Good to go? Yes, Good to go? Yes, sir. All right, next exercise. Go. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Let's go. There you go. You can move while he's crawling. You ain't going to hurt anybody. There you go, fellas. Now you're helping each other. Hey, squeeze it down. Go here and you don't have to crawl as far. Squeeze. Squeeze down. Let's go. Good job, fellas. That's the way to help each other out. All right, stop. You keep going. You keep going. Look at the difference. Look at him. And look at him. You see the difference? Hey, you're not a girl, right? Full range of motion. Full range of motion. Start over. Go. Stay up because the guy next to you needs you to stay up. Stay up for the guy next to you. Stay up because the guy next to you needs you. Get up. Make sure they're staying straight. Make sure they're they're spreading out. If you want, if you really want to game the game, you want to win. Yeah. You got to win inches, right? Yeah. Inches make feet. Feet uh -huh. make yards. Mm -hmm. Have them spread out like okay. that. Okay. They're interlocking their arms and their legs. They're supporting each other. Okay. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Stay up! That little voice is lying to you. That little voice in your head is a liar. Don't listen. Stay up! Stay up, Hunter. That little voice is a liar. Don't listen to it. That little voice is lying to you. Stay up! Stay up! Stay up! Nobody's looking, right? Nobody's looking, so I can put my knee on the deck. That's how I get stronger? Is that right? No, sir. Is that how you guys work? No, no sir. sir. Hold each other accountable. Up. 23. Up. 24. Up. 25. Up. 26. Up. 27. Up. 28. Up. Make sure you stay low to the ground. You're not doing a baby crawl like that guy over there. Wait, get down. Up. 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 Hey, dig let's your feet go, in the ground. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Dig your feet in the ground. Dig your feet in the ground. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Come on, Rahea. Yeah. You got to keep going. If you want to straighten it out, you got to straighten it out as you go through. Come on, bud. Get quit on that. Let's go, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, puppy. Come on, baby. Right here. Hey, you're good, Soy. You're good, Hunter. Go, Soy. You're good, go, guys. kid. When he gets under you, say go. Come on, Adrian, stay up. Communicate. Help each other. Come on, Nick. Come on, Nick. Come on, Come on, kid. Hey, that doesn't mean you're done. You're not done until he's set. Can you say something? Are you set? They're still waiting on you. They think you're crawling through the tunnel. Set. All right, you're done. It's kind of opened my eyes to the real world, like knowing that you got to come, you got to be accountable if you. You're not going to be at practice. You got to let coach know. Just like if you're not going to be at work, you got to let your boss know, or there's going to be consequences. It seems like a lot, probably, to a lot of people that aren't in it, but it's just something that you learn to love. And so, really, when you're doing work and you're grinding in the summer, it doesn't seem so bad once you've bought into the culture. Coach T and Coach Swanson. They like build you up to be a man, really. They teach you a lot about life. Honestly, without football, I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. It's more about, you know, what intangibles you bring. Like, are you dedicated? Because, I mean, there's people with all the athleticism in the world that don't play football, and it's because they can't handle the dedication, the commitment that comes with it. They're not your suburb uh, kids. They're definitely blue collar. And when you're actually in 
the room watching those guys. You're like, they're not as big as they look when you play them. They're not as fast as you think when you watch them, but they play at their best at a rate that other programs don't do. And I think that's the margin that allows GI to be competitive. And that's how close it is to not being competitive. It's, it's just we have tough kids in a, in a school that and a staff that gets everything out of them. And that's very uncommon. I mean, they're turning guys like like me, obviously. I mean, I'm all right, but I'm not like the best player ever. And they're making they're making us into playoff team every single year. I, I didn't realize it till like about my junior year how much they put in to this program. I work like Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, and a lot of the times when I'm driving by Grand Island Senior High, I see Coach T's truck. And I don't think people really understand how many hours he puts in, and the rest of the coaching staff is there with them too pretty much the entire way so they're always watching film they're always making game plans they're always putting us in the best positions to succeed so i've heard times where the coaches like stayed overnight in the locker room so and woke up got up and like really early in the morning like five or four and started film and going like spending their weekends there so i was just talking to coach mcquinn about it the other day he said that after every game when he lived in wood river he would have to sleep on coach jones's couch just to be able to make it to the Saturday morning practices on time and not worry about being late. And without them, there wouldn't be Islander football. They're one of a kind. They are very different, but very fun at the same time. Dysfunctionally functional. A great bunch of men. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't trade my association with them for anything, but a lot of characters. Offensive staff, great analytical guys, some fire here and there, great humor, um, but a little more reserved. Defensive staff, absolutely nuts. It's a very good description, dysfunctionally functional. Because, <laughs> yeah, if, I think if people gotta, gotta be a fly on the wall of one of our meetings, they'd, they'd possibly think we hate each other, but uh, really it's just a different way of showing love. <laughs> Yeah, dysfunctionally functional would be a good way to good way to describe our staff. I woke up at 6.40 today and thought I was late. Kirby getting more camera time. I drove by <laughs> maybe like 72 mile, which that wouldn't look good anyway, coming in. I'm here, coach. Alright, I'll just leave. <laughs> Get fired. Yeah. So they were left in. <laughs> Didn't know that. <laughs> but I was early. Hell, they didn't get out until 7:15. Happy birthday, Jeff. <laughs> no comment. I don't like being on camera. Ready? One in. Twice. Okay, Christian. But we're not eating either. <laughs> <laughs> Fly around! <laughs> Ready? Go! <laughs> Get some footage of that. Now I'm here. Thanks for the hire. Chat! Hey! I'm here! Never let me do any marine drills. Up. Hot coffee, black. No sugar, no spice. No, no sugar, no spice, no foo foo juice. <laughs> that was awesome on your part. One of your best filming moves of all time. There's been a lot of things said on camera that shouldn't have been. <laughs> it might be on the director's cut. I can't cut. say good faith and confidence for the academy. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. He's got his boots on. Hey, what are you doing with sneakers on, Private? Yeah, it's Private Gomer. Okay. How fast you? are you gonna run in those today? <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to those boots. I don't want to fight these lights. Wow, that's 
That's when I about got cornholed there. Okay, you're three. Now I'm the star, right? No, I don't want to be a star. Just, just a backup. You could be in the credits, right? I put you put me in the credits. Coach Joe Wells. He is one crazy dude. How about Ichabod Crane with the camera? <laughs> Knock yourself out. Practice in the middle of the night. Still shows up. That a baby. That a baby. Here we go. Reload. Dance. Feet shoulder width apart. Hands on the thigh board. Thumb to the right. I'm gonna end up killing Carson. <laughs> Hand the ball. Where are we out here? I don't. I don't know. Who's tight end? Tight end is on the other on the other side. You don't know. Dying natural causes Seriously. out here. Your tight ends can't catch a cold in a virus ward. Kill it. Look at that. He's making my guys run. <laughs> it's a lot. It's day, it's day one. Not anymore. <laughs> Jeff's making my guys run. Let's go, boy. Run! Are you trying to make one another look like? Hey, I made the last one. Pace, pace, pace. You know what we need to do? We need to do a double play drill. Yeah, you're right. Alex, you're not. Alex. Listen, follow. Follow. Did play. you not watch after you told me? Were you pacing him? Oh, I love baby. That's my boy. I think you need to show him. <laughs> I was just trying to get yeah, you. Need to show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is how it's done. Not oh, come on. Oh, right, bud? Touchdown every time. Right? That was perfect. How are we ever going to get two if you don't follow the flip? Oh, okay. I was following the flip. Quick feet. We were having Somebody a good talk, too. Over. So then Strawberry Shortcake says to the villain, ha ha, I'll stop you. <laughs> it's like, does Raggedy Andy have cotton? He's got to, right? <laughs> O line, running backs, y'all. Running backs, y'all. O line, running backs, y'all. Everybody up close. What a master plan. Can we have a coordinator talk if you want? Step <laughs> away <laughs> from the proper exit. Just, just stay warm on the tech talk until we need you. <laughs> get down lower, Anthony. Got to get you lower. Depends on the brand. Ducks, because there's the one that's got the duck on it. Yes. Yeah, group, 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 no, that's that's the secondary. Go. That's not the original. You film. You don't talk. You're silent. <laughs> the silent narrator. <laughs> Kirby so, plays a dog. Can I have a grandson? Now, now Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Rat dog. Say, it's your, your grand dog. <laughs> you talk like that about your grand dog. <laughs> <laughs> that, that dog is no relation to me. I mean, you. Like the glasses? Look smart. Hmm? Hmm? Am I supposed to look you or the camera? Is this a better look? Hey, fun with the camera today. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to voice over and you just keep talking and he's going to cut your voice out. Go ahead. Oh God, my name's Paul. I, I Look at my ears. They stick out so far, I'm going to take off here. <laughs> Ever since I got into coaching, the quest for a title is implied. I think that it's so obvious that I think when you say it, it kind of tells, tells the person that's hearing you, you're on the outside, you don't get it. Because everyone competing at anything is about winning. So if winning's implied, then what's left? Well, the process. And that's what we're about because what we know is if you want to win, you have to trust the process and you have to live the process. and you can't just preach it to the kids and not practice it yourself. And so, yeah, we want to win. Um, we want to win for each other. We want to win for Coach T. I want to win for me. I mean, there's a selfish part of every competitor. But uh, if you focus on the winning, you're not going to win as much. And that's just something that experience teaches a lot of competitors, that if you focus on what's in front of you, then it's a cliche, but the winning kind of takes care of itself. So, Wanting to win means nothing. Be willing to do what it takes to win in September while you're in January, that's what makes a difference. Wanting to win.
find me somebody who wants to lose. If that's all you're in it for, and it's in for the, the W's, then there's gonna, eventually there's gonna be some times where it's difficult and you're not gonna make it through those. You know, I, I get inspired by our kids. You know, I never used to think about that. It was always about the next thing, but sometimes I'm able to now at my age sit back for moments and just really am amazed at what they do and appreciative of the great kids that we have and how, how hard they work and, and they inspire me every day. It wasn't winning a state championship and hauling the trophy. That would have been a, a really cool byproduct of the process that we are taking you through. Been really cool. But I'm more concerned as to what happens on Monday morning, seniors, when you essentially go off into the world. You leave the Islander football program. And I'm interested in knowing if you will continue to put on your armor, honor, courage, and commitment and loyalty, and continue to fight to be a positive influence in the world. That's, that's what we want. So, yeah, I mean, the winning's implied, but we're not really... That's just something you kind of write down on a sheet of paper, you stick it on your wall. The business of getting better is 99.9%, uh, you know. So yeah, we'll write it down, we'll go for the win, but in the meantime, let's do what it takes to win. Okay, don't worry about the top of the mountain now. Don't worry about August 25th now. Worry about being the best we can be today. Right this moment, right this second. I'm excited. It's like a family reunion. We got the whole family back together. Now we're ready to go and have some fun. Let's be excellent every moment. And then we put a bunch of moments together that are excellent. We'll be exactly where we want to be. We will be special. The focus is just getting them prepped, which, you know, you, you could put in 10 hour days with them and you'd never feel like you're there. We were going to have a brand new line. It was going to be brand new. And we were a little shaky about it, but we had confidence in the boys. We knew they'd come together. We really felt like we needed some leaders to emerge on the offensive and defensive line. Uh, yeah, you know, there's not very many of you. It's not a good class. It's, you know, if you can go 500, you'll be lucky. Uh, you know, I, I, think, I think they heard those little voices chirping. Oh, your linemen are tiny and they don't have any chemistry together and all that. I mean, I saw those guys through the summer and I saw how hard those linemen worked. And uh, we knew we were going to have to make up some ground because we were going to have to play some, some guys maybe that were going to play a little bit sooner than what we anticipated. The main areas were definitely a couple playmakers here. You know, how are you going to be up front with, with a lot of new faces? It, I mean, we just didn't have a very big senior class as far as line. And we lost a lot of good leaders. And that's something that's an, it's kind of an annual tradition. Who's going to be the next set of leaders? I was never worried about the character of our kids. I was never worried about uh, how hard they would work, and I was never worried that they would rise to the occasion. Get out of your comfort zone, stand up, have some confidence, lead us, because you can lead us.
Go, keep going, Eric. Good. Way to be, though, Jared. Way to know the route. Good. On the motion. 11.30. Ow. If I'm not rotating in the first couple groups O, then there's certainly a, a need to fill on D, right? And we always say, see the need, feel the need. And so we shouldn't have to be putting a, a search warrant out for guys to help our team out. There it is. Okay. Right hash, right hash. Drives up. Punch up. Punch up. The left. Go on. Right up through his nose. Get out of my way! Sure, sure, sure. There you go, there you go, there you go. Good, good. I want to make that slice upfield. If I start making it too early, you're going to see some good DNs that are going to come cave right back down. Good job, Jaron. Franco! Come on, get up, T, get up, T. Out of play, way to play. Got to get out of lazy tendencies, Rowdy. Or we're just spinning our wheels. If you don't get the lazy out of you, it don't matter. You let your team down. I'm tired of being in your every play. Hey, next group. Next group. There you go, there you go, Elmer. Ready, one. Not bad. Pretty good pickup. I'll go back and do it again. That's a lineman's play. You gear up every play. Ah. Full speed, John. Full speed, John. Keep moving. Keep moving feet. Good, Eric. Good, Eric. Here we go. Next play. Next play. Next play. There you go. Work him. Work him. Work him. There you go, Sweaty. Yes. Yes. Oh, the catch. Whoa. So I'm right in here off this back knee. Here. Run his into the mat. Hey, we got the mat. This is as close to a full speed tackle as we can get. You ain't gonna get hurt. We got a nice big mat from the 1984 Olympics. Good. Don't lift. Run. Run your feet and he'll come up. Check out. Check out. So we're gonna take an entire lap around the field. And if we have to have this discussion again, it'll turn into two laps and three. And maybe NDD will just be all running. But the only way to play yourselves into shape is to play. And standing back behind other people watching them play don't do It don't make you better and don't put you in shape. It doesn't make your team better. Here we go. On your job. Let's get a move. Now bring your hips with it. If this is how we got to do it, that's how we'll do it. Because I'll make it so uncomfortable for everybody that you start peer pressuring each other to get out there. If you see somebody that's been standing around the whole time and you didn't like this, then I'd grab and shove them out there. D line on three, one, two, three. D line. Good, good, good. Truck knees. Defense. Great job. Now let him go, would ya? So he can finish his three lines. Yeah. There you go, there you go, there you go, Cole. Good, Cole. Why would you block a whole guy? Block half the guy! Good job, big hoss! Now run right through him! Good job! Follow that great big old butt right there. Come on, Will! You gotta make that play! You're the only guy that can make it! Why are we regressing here? Why are we regressing going backwards? Let's go! Here we go. Hey, good job, D-line! Come on! Come on! Nobody blocked him. Get going, get going, attack! Coming out of fall camp, I felt good. I felt like uh, we were progressing. Uh, we had made a lot of progress from camp early in June 
through seven on sevens. Uh, I felt good about where we were. Uh, we were honestly in, in kind of a cross crossroads, I guess, defensively uh, between how much we were going to use our base 4-2 defense and how much we were going to use our nickel 3-4. We'd run them both. Year before this year, we'd run about 65% 3-4. And uh, we anticipated having to use more 4-2 this year, and it turned out we, we were basically evolved into a 3-4 team the whole year. And so that was a nerve-wracking and exciting process. The reality is the game's changing. Uh, teams run different sets now that require a different look. And what was really impressive was how much fun we could have doing something that was out of our comfort zone. And it worked, and so we continued to do quite a bit of it, and you just have to adapt. That's kind of an old traditional Islander D from back when Ermacher was captain of the ship. So I think it went well. I, I think uh, that front and that scheme fit the identity of our kids and it fit the abilities of our kids. And uh, indirectly, it made our offense a little bit better because we were short of linemen. You gotta have four good D linemen, you know, in a, in a 4 2 5 scheme. And we felt like we had four good D linemen, but we didn't have a whole lot of veteran depth. And if we were going to have to play all four of those guys both ways, then our offense was going to suffer a little bit too. And we felt like the 3-4 gave us a better rotation of linemen, put one more uh, DB, maybe a little more athletic guy on the field, helped us coverage-wise and helped us with pressure. I mean, I knew it was going to be tough for me because I was, I was small, but and I kind of adapted to it, and it, it was, I had a good season. So. Did you enjoy playing it? Then? Yeah. I prefer base still, though. <laughs>intensity level definitely changes when you know that something that you've waited for pretty much the entire year since last season ended it's is right there for you opening game of the season you can play Carney not trying to make a big deal out of it even though it was a big deal but just try to treat it like any other game we've been waiting since like last November to, to play that game, and it's been a long process since my senior year. You know, I was nervous until the second I got in the bus and I saw my teammates, you know, they're in the zone. I thought we were well prepared and really excited to play. I mean, I was excited, I was nervous, I was all those things, but mostly I was just ready to play because we've been putting in so much work over the summer that we knew it was time. There's a lot of anticipation on behalf of Islander Nation this year. They knew they had a good team last year. Some late injuries really hurt them. But they've got a lot of guys that played plenty of football back last year and a very talented quarterback in Cole Evans that looks like he's ready to step up and take over. It's time. Let's find out what we got. Coach Cloutier talked about the honey badger that he didn't he? That guy's got a lot of not give about who he lines up on, how big they are, he just attacks. This ain't calculus. It ain't even consumer math. It's freaking football. So just get off the freaking ball and knock the out of somebody every play. It ain't a brain teaser, right? It's not making it real complicated. We gotta relentlessly compete every play. You've been trained. I know we'll line up correctly. We'll do all those things right. You just gotta give yourself permission to turn it loose and have some fun and have your buddies back, okay? And fight every play. We're about ready to get the 2017 season underway. Glad to have you with us on the KRGI Sports Network. It's the Islanders and the Bearcats.
sail into the end zone, so that'll be an easy start. Castle will give it off on the left side. Quickly swallowed up by the Islander front line. In fact, he'll only give him a gain of one. Coster rolling left, feeling some pressure. Pass is going to sail over the intended receiver. Aaron Prancel is with him stride for stride. Coster will get the kick. Bearcats called for it for the Islanders, but they're going to step away from it. And this is going to take a Carney bounce and roll dead back inside the 15 yard line. Evans with a single man in the backfield. That's Teaser. He'll stay in the block. Evans looking over the top, throwing on first down. Islanders try to see if they could open up the eyes of the defense, but Carney was ready. Dunning coming out of the backfield and lose a couple of tackles, pushes across the 15 to the 16 yard line. This time they'll try Keezer in the middle and there's just nowhere to go. Carney was ready. Mike Bovarubius deep to kick it away for the calendars. We'll get this away from about the five. High end over and kick. Bearcats call for and make the fair catch at their own 24 yard line. Bearcats try to go up the middle and rank into a wall of white as they come back to the line. Big collision up there led by Colton Teaser. Keeps one man in to block, fakes it, trying to run it to the outside. Gallanders were red and he's going to be dropped. Coster 39, trying to set up a spring. He gets the pass complete underneath, has some blocking out in front. It looks like it will be short. A bobble snap. Is he going to be able to push forward and get it? I don't think he made it. The play in the Islanders will get good field position back on a big stop at their 44-yard line. Carney's a, it's a unique animal. It's really unlike any other game because it, it is a, a feud where you know each other so well. Uh, everything goes out the window. We, we have, I think, something 600 plays uh, broken down on Carney. It doesn't feel like a start to the season. It feels like its own season. It really does. I, we felt like we, we had a better beat on what they were doing. They, they had actually changed quite a bit in the previous two years offensively. And so we were, um, again, you know, confronted with the task of, you know, they're a very good football team. They have, they have great uh, uh, offensive line. They've got their returning quarterback. They've got a very good backfield, et cetera so on and so forth, but uh, we felt like going in the game, we really had a good plan to defend them. We felt like we did defend them well. So to be, you know, be facing a rival, be facing a tough team, and uh, somebody that's set, you know, um, versatile on offense and not have any film on them, that's, as a defensive coach, that's always a, uh, a little scary. So we kind of knew it would be tough, and we knew it would be a good game, a hard fought game. Evans, out of the gun. Looks in the end zone, lobbing it for the back line. That's Nord Hughes. Touchdown, Grand Island. Grand Island capitalizes on an 80-yard drive. It took eight plays. They take the lead. 30 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's Grand Island six, Carney nothing. This is Islanders football on the KRGI Sports Network. Foster drops the throw, has time, looks over the middle, knocked away at the last instant. What a play by Will Nordhues. Same play, this time they're looking for the corner. This time it's knocked away. That pass was underthrown. Stolberg, the intended receiver, and the Islanders had a deep man. Dylan Thompson comes up with another big stop. Evans wants to throw, tries to set up a screen. It's tipped, intercepted. Touchdown, Carney. Lee Harrington, all by himself, broke through, deflected the pass, waited for it to come into his hands, picked it off at the five, and the Bearcats are on the board. That lineman had touchdown on his mind. Harrington takes it in for the touchdown. We still have a tie ball game. Second down and a dozen. Carney Schultz split. Evans over the middle. Complete. Andrew Bardalis extends. Gets the football for a first down inside the 38-yard line. Evans read option again. Cuts back against the green. Running room. 10, 5. Touchdown. Grand Island. The Islanders 
cap off a 17-play drive that covers 80 yards. Back out in front with 7.54 left to play in the first half. It's Grant Allen 13, Carney 6. Wide outs on each side. Coster will go out of the gun. Islanders will rush four. Coster, lob route for the corner. Obermiller battles for the football. Got some space. Gets the catch. Touchdown, Carney. One on one over in the corner. Fade route. Very well thrown by Coster. That's hard to defend as a defensive back. I thought that we played like it was our first game. You know, we weren't really the sharpest, but we were tough like always, you know, and we grinded it out. He'll run read option back the other way. Coster keeps, and he's in there. Touchdown, Carney. Carney spread the field. Ball fake off the left guard. Coster keeps it on read option and goes into the end zone. Second down and goal from the six-yard line. Evans feeling some pressure. Rolling left, tosses to the back of the end zone, and he dropped it. Oh, no. That ball is in the hands of the receiver, and he could not square it away. I mean, he is all alone. I thought we kicked a field goal. We were going to get the ball back. Well, it turns out we got it back twice, and not just once, and we had it had it in there plus territory a couple times. So um, you got 25 seconds to make a decision, usually less than that. So uh, it's one I'll stick with, but uh, obviously, you know, would have liked to see a different outcome. Islanders drop a heartbreaker here tonight, losing to Carney by a final score of 20 to 16. We'll always fix what we need to. We'll fix it, okay? But we don't need to fix your heart. We got that. We got that in spades. We got all kind of heart. That's the most important commodity right there, right? And then, you know, just a couple plays didn't break our way and it went in their favor. But, I mean, overall, I didn't think it was a bad place to start. And I thought that we showed that we had a lot of room to improve. Win or lose, once that game's over, it's kind of like now the season's here. So. It was for sure one we wanted to put behind us right away because we knew we didn't want to want to have it affect our next weeks and next week. You're definitely disappointed in opening season game you lost, but I mean, you knew you had eight more games you had to play and every single one of them mattered, and so. Even though we lost the game, we still had the mindset of like, all right, that game's done, We're, it's over with, we're just gonna focus on week two now. You know, it would have been nice to win, but at the same time, we knew we had a team we could compete with anybody right after, right after week one. Didn't know, know Carney would be playing for a state championship, uh, but we knew they had a good team. The mission's still intact. You know, we, we got some bumps and bruises, but we, you know, overall we came out pretty good. I think we got a lot of questions answered. Um, our goals are still in front of us. Let's respond and, and let's get better. I, I felt like there was a lot of focus on, okay, Who's next? That, that one's over. Let's learn a little bit. We're going to get better. Um, so there certainly wasn't a panic. There wasn't a, you know, put my head down. Ah, oh, crap. Yeah, th those people were right. We're not very good. And that's kind of what I was, you know, again, you kind of, okay, did they really learn what I want them to learn through the summer? Um, you're going to fail in life. It doesn't define who you are. Uh, and it doesn't define where you're going. It's just a failure. And uh, that's exactly how they took it. And so you go into the North Platte game, and you just you just time to start building momentum. I remember thinking that like we really had to win this game because we had to make a statement that we're just they're not a team to mess around with. It was a big game for us, um, bounce back game. We knew we had to have each other's back. We had to prepare really hard. They want to play really well. They want to be great. They want to be excellent. And they they work awful hard to do it, and they don't want to let anybody down. They want to let the themselves down or their teammates or their coaches or their parents or the fans. The key to getting a win. Both North Platte and Grand Allen had good starts in their season openers last week, but both ended up with losses. So tonight, a fantastic finish is a big part of their plans. This is Brian Gallagher along with Dan Thayer as the KRGI Sports Network presents high school football. We're at Grand Allen's Memorial Stadium where the Islanders will host the Bulldogs. Trepidation, anxiety, you want to come out, you don't want to lay an egg, you're, you're, you're home opener. Obviously we need to get in the win column and we need to play really well. And
and both of these teams saw early lead slip away last week, so they're both looking for improvement. Very winnable game last week for the Islanders. They did let it slip away. Brian, you, you forget about last week, but at the same time, you play with a chip on your shoulder and you don't let those mistakes happen again. Islanders drop back in coverage. Now pressure into his face. Ball's going to be thrown up the field. Pass is battled for at the 24-yard line. Looks like it's going to be an interception. Play action. Looks over the middle. Got a man behind coverage. Nordy is, and it's just off the fingertips. They got to take away. They've got to stop so far forcing the missed field goal. They just have not been able to get the offense going. Hey, Jaron, you're on number two all day. Second punt of the night for Bryson Crawl. Islanders again come with heat. This time a better kick. Nord Hughes deep to receive in his 23. Had little time to react, but is able to shake off the tackle. He's got some running room. Has some blocks. Goes up the sideline. Cuts it back against the grain. 10, 5, touchdown. Islanders going with a three-man rush here. Ruffin wants to throw, has time, looks off left side, trying to lob it over the top, a battle for the football! Deflection and another interception! This time it's Tyler Sextro, cutting back towards the middle of the field. He'll be taken down, but not until he gets it to the 39-yard line. Another takeaway for the Islanders. Evans. Throws a little bubble screen for Sextro. Off the right side, gets a block. Has some room. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Grand Island. And Cobra Rubius with a shorter kick that's angling towards the sideline. North flat a little tardy getting there. The editors are going to make a play on it. They're going to have a shot at that free kick back at the 15-yard line. North Flat looked like they were just going to let the ball die. The Islanders had coverage down there around the 15. And the Islanders recover the free kick. Look at the hustle downfield for Tyler Flatness. Evans looking for the corner. has got a man there. That's North Hills. He made it look easy. Touchdown, Islanders. The Islanders threatening it once again here with 6.20 left to play in the first half. Evans looks over the middle, got a man in the neighborhood. Well thrown right on the money, baby! Touchdown, Islander! The Islanders improved to one and one as they blank North Flat here tonight by a final score of 41 to nothing. Next week, we'll travel with the Alamirs to Kinnick Stadium in Omaha. They'll take on Omaha Northwest. That'll be a 7.30 kickoff next Friday night. And with double zeros on the clock, we end up with a score of Grand Island 41, using North Flat Bulldogs 0. Once that happened, we kind of just got rolling. We kind of realized, you know, hey, once we get going, we get going and we're tough to beat and that carried over the next couple weeks. When we're going, we're going.
Well, Coach Warren's really turned that program around from a, from a perennial, you know, really poor program to a program that's drawn more and more talent. He's getting that talent organized, and we felt like the, the year before, man, that they had a nice football team, a great dual threat quarterback, some great linemen, and, and so we didn't know what to expect. Uh, we knew they were going to be well coached, and and uh, but we felt like we had a better football team, and if we went in and executed, that we'd be we'd be in good shape. And that was, of course, one of three kind of different schedules for us because we were the back end of the doubleheader, um, and so this was a lot of the season was a lot of adaptation uh, for different schedules and different types of things, and I thought our kids handled it really well. I thought all right, we challenged them to start fast, and we did, and uh, once again. You know, we had guys start to emerge that we were needing to emerge, and uh, that that was that was good to see. And obviously, uh, we start by that third game, start to see what kind of depth we're developing to. Played ex exceptionally well, I thought, at, at Northwest. during the regular season, but Lincoln East turned it around late to move to the final four in Class A. Grant is now one two straight, while the Spartans have dropped in a row. So do we continue the trend, or do we see the end? Yeah, we talked about dominating start, right? GI tough and physical. The most physical game today. This is our most important game of the year, because it's the game we got, right? It's the game we got right now in six minutes and 45 seconds. Okay, and you ain't gonna never get it back, okay? And we said finish everything. Dominate from the start, fast start, physical, finish everything. Everything we do, we're finishing. Every block, every tackle, every throw, every carry, every catch, every coverage, every kick, every snap. Okay, bring it touch teammate. in a quarterback with a single setback with him out of the pistol. Looks up left side, throws that one on a high slant. It's intercepted at the 35-yard line. Dylan Thompson gets the early pick for the Islander defense on a deflected ball, and the Islanders have a takeaway in the opening series. Clean snap. The kick is up. The kick is good, and the Islanders are able to capitalize on the early turnover. Misdirection in the backfield. He's trying to run out of it and spun down hard. Dan Sims came in and threw him down like a rodeo cap back at the 12 yard line. What a play by Sims. Inside they go. No, they fake it. Evans off right side, sees the seam. 10 5 touchdown, Islanders. The Islanders 10, Spartans 10. This is Islanders football on the KRGI Sports Network. What a great challenge. What a gut check. Hey, this is a gut check. This is an artifactor game. How are we going to respond for 24 minutes? Okay? That's a perfect opportunity to grow as a man and grow as a team. Right? Grow as an individual. Gut check. Let's go. Break it down. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We got to one more. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Second down at about 15, Evans pumps one, has a man deep, Nord Hughes behind the defense, comes back and gets the football at the 36, fights his way forward to the 33, a huge completion and a first down for the Islanders. The spot is down, the kick is up and it's good. Trips to the right side. Quick look for Beckner, over the middle, it could Tipped, intercepted, Keezer gets a deflection, headed the other way, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Islanders! Grand Island 20, you're looking easy. 
Spartans 10. And the Islanders will rush three. Now they show blitz. Keys are on a late blitz. Swing pass right, left side. And what a great open field tackle gets to Jack Lemoff. Textbook takedown after a gain of one. Evans out of the pistol. Looks long. He's got a man behind the defense. On oh, the money. Nard Hughes. Long distance. Touchdown. Islanders. Islanders come with a blitz. Pressured pass. That's going to be intercepted. That looks like Franzel. 10 5. Touchdown. Another pick six for the Islanders. Here's Garrett Dunning breaking through traffic. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Islanders. Garrett Dunning breaking the long one. Touchdown, Grand Island. They shook off the shaky second quarter and get the win here tonight by a final score of 41 to 17. Wasn't pretty at times, but the finished part, we're getting there. We're getting there. That's exciting. Great effort. Proud of you. O-line, I think we're starting to come of age. Yeah, and we battled through some adversity. We responded to holding calls. We responded to special teams gaffes. We responded to different things. That's that's encouraging. That's awesome. Great job. Touch your teammate. Proud of you. Next week, the Islanders will host Omaha North. It'll be Hall of Fame weekend for the Islanders next week. The Islanders improved to three and one as they down the Spartans tonight by a final score of 41 to 17. We felt good going into week five. Cautiously optimistic would probably be a better way to say it with you know the last couple of years against Omaha North. So I really liked the putting the Hall of Fame game on, on North because that, that is important to our kids. Our kids know that that's an important game. They know it's you know a link to the past. They don't want to let those Hall of Famers down. Um, and uh, I knew our kids would be ready to play. I knew the second. Uh, that I started group meetings that day that we had a way different edge than I'd sensed all year. And I knew we were going to be fine. Yeah, Coach T said, yeah, we're just going to go full on out. We're just going to play, we're just going to run as many blitzes as we can. I was like, that's fine with me. I mean, it's goosebumps. It's goosebumps because, uh, you know, he won't take any credit, but the, he's the chess equivalent to a grandmaster. He just is. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of smart guys on his staff. And we all, you know, I like to think I'm a pretty smart coach, but when you talk to him long enough, you realize just how far you are from that level. And I say it in a lot of sports and everything, there's levels, you know, and uh, knowing that he was going to throw his playbook out the window, so to speak, and play, uh, you know, kind of New York City park chess. He was going to make rapid fire moves. He was going to take gambles. He was going to... Uh, and honestly, he took more gambles and he took them quicker than I've ever seen a coach take. And he did it with a sort of savant uh, nature that it's just rare to see. It's almost, it's like watching somebody compose or, or paint or do something where you just, you almost sometimes separate yourself from what's happening and just watch it happen. I was kind of hoping I'd be a linebacker that week, maybe position change, get a free, free blitz off the edge. Every single team they play, it's an intimidation factor and they try to use that, and so all week we were just preparing and knowing that if we play how we know we can, we can put up a fight against these guys. And I was honestly sick and tired of just getting blown out by those guys. The week was uh, for sure one of a lot of physical. We knew it was gonna be a power run. They had Xander Gray and a power runner, big running back, and then they also had Milton Sarball, a really elusive runner. So, I mean, it was a lot of run pound, 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 running uh, week of practice. Guy, remember the three things we talked about? Win the snap mentality, win the snap. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. 
Win that snap. Don't think about nothing else. And then win the next snap. Okay? Huge R factor. Huge. That's what we base our whole program on. Huge R factor. The good, the bad, the ugly, we respond. Okay? We respond in the appropriate way. We respond as a team. And three, all day tough, man. All day tough. Okay? If you thought you've given the absolute most that you could possibly ever give, you got more in you. You've got a little bit more. It takes a little bit more to be a champion, right? It takes a little bit more. And you've got to convince yourself up here, I'm going to give it. I'm, I'm all in. Chips are all in, man. Chips are all in. We're burning the boats. We ain't turning around. When we walk into the arena, it's on. It's on. You can hear the energy start to build in the background here at Grand Elms Memorial Stadium. It's an odd sight, an odd scene when you see temperatures 90 degrees as we get ready for game time this late in September. At first, the first day of fall definitely has that summer feel. This year, they come in ranked number three, according to the World Herald, number two, according to the Lincoln Journal Star. And it's no surprise because what they have done is steamroll their way through their schedule so far. They have dominated every opponent that they've seen and just simply worn people out. Dan, this is just a very talented football team. Ryan Covarubias with the end over end launch. It'll easily get into and one hop through the end zone. First down handoff goes to Sarbaugh and he is bounced back. He got back to the line of scrimmage at the 20 yard line. Cosplay, left side gray, ripped off his feet. That's Colton Kieser who blew it up. So this is where the Islanders are hoping that they have an edge with the leg and accuracy of Ryan Covarubias. The field goal try is up and it is good. I set in the backfield. Vogelstrom gives it off to Gray and this time he is met by the Islander posse. Will an offset eye as Judson moves to the right side. Sarbaugh hit the line, it's gonna be stopped! Oh, he hit a wall! And then Jaron Frenzel came up to mop things up and make sure that he did not get away. Vogelstrom hit as he throws it, almost intercepted. Regardless, the editors came with pressure. That's what he'll do, he'll angle it towards the corner. The editors give pursuit, Nord Hughes, Got airborne in the end zone, tipped it back to a teammate, and the Islanders will down it at the one yard line. Under nine minutes to play in the first half, three nothing lead for the Islanders here at Memorial Stadium. Back to throw, Vogelstrom lays it up for grabs, battle for the football, it's intercepted! Ben Riley stepped up in front and gets the pick. The Islanders a takeaway. Clean snap, the kick is up, and it's good! And the Islanders extend their lead. 2.38 left to play in the first half. That brings us to the score, Grand Island 6, Omaha North 0. Vogelstrom on the draw play, Sarbaugh keeps the legs pumping, has some running room. This is what they didn't want to see. Nord Hughes tries for the open field tackle, cannot get to it and he will get escorted all the way to the other end. The breakaway speed of Milton Sarbaugh shows in one play, 74 yards, touchdown Omaha North. It's Grand Allen six, what? Omaha North six. This is Allender's football on the KRGI Sports Network. Before we left the locker room, we said three things. Win every snap, okay? Bring it every damn snap and be a competitor, BGI time. We said our factor, Coach Cloutier said it again. Our factor is going to be huge and all day tough, right? And we do it together, we rise as one. We've got to play at the same energy and intensity. We did snap one, and it's got to go through 48 minutes, and you just keep bringing it, and you keep hitting them in the mouth, and you put your hand in the freaking dirt, and you do it again. Play after play after play. Win it. Go win the one. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, Vikings changing their look up front, going with a four-man front. Evans goes over the middle. Scott pass over the middle. It's complete. That's Kieser out of the backfield. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Islanders! It took
took 19 seconds. It took one play, and the editors have regained the lead. 11.41 left to play in the third quarter. Drop Lake Bray, escaping tacklers, no place to go! Sam Sims and Jaron Franchel did the old one-two and drop him back at the 35-yard line. Evans, read option, right side, looks for the corner, cuts in between a defender, and he's in there! Touchdown, Islanders! I think to a certain degree, when we got up, our kids' effort was still unbelievable. It's still great. However, the edge got a little bit dulled with maybe a little bit of complacency. Hey, this is no problem. We, we have this, and we needed to keep that edge, you know, very, very sharp. Combine that with probably the two best backs in Nebraska on the same team, and, uh, you know, they get coached pretty darn well, too. And, and uh, we wore down a little bit at a couple positions where we were a little bit mismatched. And, and uh, you know, add all those things together. I don't think it maybe was really one thing, uh, but, but a combination of things. Well, really, for three and a half quarters, we did a pretty solid job of shutting them down. But it was tough to watch. It just kind of it unraveled. Back to Sarbaugh. Started inside, bounced to the outside. The foot race is on. Picks up a block. Angles for the sideline. He'll get pushed out of bounds. Balls out of bounds! Now the Islanders will not be able to get to it before the ball gets to the sideline. Back to Gray. He'll blast his way into the end zone off the left side. Touchdown, Touchdown Omaha Xander North. Touchdown, Xander Gray. With 5.03 left on the clock, we are knotted up at 20 apiece. I don't really know where it went wrong, but it felt you could feel it unraveling at some point. And it was just trying to get it to stop. You know, our guys battled their tails off that game. And by the time you get to that fourth quarter on the field, you know, tackling every play, getting up, flying back up, and doing it again against the guy who's got about 40, 50 pounds on you, you wear down. It's, it's just part of the game and it was not the fault of our kids. They they played their hearts out that game and we just came up, you know, a play short really. So So with zeros on the clock after what felt like a heavyweight bout, the Islanders lose a heartbreaker to Omaha North, twenty six to twenty. Proud of your effort. Effort was unbelievable. Okay? We gotta continue to work on finishing. Right? We gotta continue to work on finishing. Our effort was outstanding. Effort was outstanding. Now that makes, hey, every game from here out, right, district-wise, it's the most important game of the year. So we got to be quick healers. We got to be quick responders, right? Because that's what we do is respond and get, get get right back in the mode we were in tonight. We competed our <laughs> off, competed hard. <coughs> Emphasis on finish now, finishing. You know, you look back over the season up to that point, it's like, okay, Carney High, yo, okay, one tipped interception for a touchdown. We win that game. We're that close. That's one play. We would have won that play. We would have won the game. And that, I think they came out of North feeling the same way. You know what? Dang it. We would have won that play. Just that one play, we win the whole game. I was worried about us physically. That was as physical a game as this bunch had been through. And uh, so I was worried about that playing our next toughest opponent on the road. Definitely a you know a concern, but we had a great week of practice. That that's the the thing that I look back on the okay, Millard South, what can I pinpoint? We had a great week of practice. Things from about you know, two o'clock that day on were just weird. You know, we had one of our one of our guy one of our kids get in a car accident right before it. You know, we get there and Headsets won't work and couldn't get them set up working to barely communicate during the game. And there was something about the Millard South game that just the atmosphere didn't feel right. You know, like during warm ups, it, it was quiet. It just felt like something in the air wasn't right. We got our cell phones out. You know, Coach Harvey and Coach Cunningham were talking on their, on their Nextel flip phones, uh, having some old conversations. And at that point, I was like, this is not good. So. I don't know if we were really ready. 
I don't think that we remembered that we had to bring that intensity versus every team. We brought that intensity for the first, you know, three, four, four weeks, no matter who we were playing, Kearney, Omaha Northwest, North Platte, Old North, the intensity was there the whole time. It just didn't feel like we had the same edge versus Millard South. Nobody was talking, nobody really, when we went to warm-ups, nobody said anything to each other. And, and I told Coach T, I pulled Coach T over and I said, Coach, can we, us squad leaders, go say something? Because the guys are dead. Something was different in that game, something was odd. Just that whole pregame, there was no, there was no fire. As poorly as we played at times and how we just, it, it felt like we didn't even really show up. We were really in that game for the most part too. In a way, we were just basically hung over from the O North game. Mentally, we put so much in and then you're just kind of beat up physically. And so it was tough to come back. We definitely, we didn't come out ready to play in that game. It was a tough one. And I'll give it to Miller South. They played really, really well. You know, we had a couple guys banged up. I think that's the night that Colton broke his hand and uh, I had to play a couple guys out of position. Definitely not an excuse. Uh, but it was a night where, we, you know, we just, we didn't play well. Turned the ball over, uh, showed signs of brilliance at times on offense, turned the ball over, defensively didn't tackle well. Things like North Millard South sometimes have to happen to let the kids realize that we mean it when we say it's grab your lunch pail, show up every day. At that point in the season, I think they kind of understood that. And they were really, really business-like, really. I, 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 there was no real letdown from that point forward, I don't think. Now we'll figure out how tough we really are. Backs up against the wall now. So we can either fight our way out or we can roll over, right? That's, our, that's pretty much our choices now. So we took a good whipping tonight. Okay, and now it's just up to us to respond. Coaches, just like players. I got my kick too. Okay, don't feel too good. Okay, take a knee. We gotta win. It's, it's, there's no more guarantees. Every game is must win at this point. Every game from there was a playoff game to us. We knew we had to, we had to keep winning. Three weeks ago, confidence was high as the Islanders started out their District 4 schedule with a road win over Lincoln East. Since then, Grant Allen's fallen at home to Omaha North and then at Millard South, and the battle is far from over. Tonight, Lincoln Pius X comes to town looking for a little payback. This is Brian Gallagher along with Dan Thayer as the KRGI Sports Network presents high school football. We're at Memorial Stadium in Grand Allen where the Islanders will battle the Thunderbolts of Lincoln Pius X. We're the storm. We are bringing it to them. The devil whispers, you can't withstand the storm. And the warrior replied what? I am the storm. I am the storm. Well, it's almost a crossing wind here at Memorial Stadium. We'll see how much of an effect that has, but really the key tonight is just taking care of the football with the slick conditions. Toss play right side and there's Teaser. Bouncing through, getting the ball loose. He jarred the ball out of there, and the Islanders get the ball back at the 36-yard line. This is Dunning, first to speed, got some running room, cut from behind, but he's going to get it up to the 35. Yeah, that was a huge game. Give it to Dunning. He'll push it in the middle and go! He got to the line, somebody missed a tackle, and suddenly he darts through the hole, and Garrett Dunning's in there for the touchdown. We are now not at seven all. The rain and the wind and everything, the fans that stuck around, it just made it so much fun. And I love games like that. Cole kind of took over, and our offensive line took over that game, and the from the middle of the second quarter all the way through the third and early in the fourth quarter, our offensive line took over and our running game was was the difference in the game. It was a backyard brawl. Our guys didn't care because it was, okay, no big deal. They get to sights, this is Evans, cuts back against the great 10, five, touchdown, Islander! Evans was zone, inside zone read. Ball faked to Sykes going off the left side between the gap of center and left guard, and he goes into the end zone standing up. Great job by the Islander offensive line on that drive. There's Cassidy looking for the right side, and the Islanders get it. Ben Riley, thank you very much. What a play. 
Evans continuing on the read option. Use Denning again. Pushes the pile. Heading in there. Did he make it? Yes! Touchdown! Islander! Fourth down and six. Andreessen in the backfield along with Jablonski. They'll run the read option towards the left side. Jablonski tucking in behind blockers, diving forward, did not make it. Ball is out. Jablonski does not make the first down. The ball came loose. Back at the 21-yard line and the Islander defense stops them again. And that's your ball game. In this four, Grand Island 21, Lincoln Bias, 14. Hey, couldn't be prouder. Guts. There's some serious guts to play tonight. Just what we expect, all right? That's, a, that's Islander football right there. Very proud of you. Super job. Touch your teammate. I thought that really sparked us. Yeah, Bellies comes to town, it's senior night. We all got uh we all got some emotions. Because it's it's the last it could be our potentially our last home game. I feel I feel good. I love senior night. I I, I do. Some coaches dread it. I love it. Um, it's the night where we can just pay tribute to the wonderful seniors that we have and their leadership, and we get guys recognized who don't get enough recognition and enough credit, and we can recognize the parents uh, of our seniors that they give of themselves. They give of their time, they give of their money, they give of you know, their heart and soul uh, to be behind our team and to get us what we need. And so it's time for them to be recognized as well. I wanted to play as hard as I could to make my friends and my family proud, you know, and show them what I've learned the past four years. We had to come out and play. It was, it could be our last time playing on the home field. That was the only game that my parents like came back to watch me play for. So all I was thinking was just have a, have a night, you know, go lights out. That was, that was all I was thinking. Neither rain nor wind nor stormy night would stay the Islanders from completing their rounds last week. Grant Allen endured to dodge the Thunderbolts and move back into playoff contention. Tonight it's their home finale and it's senior night. And the Islanders want to go out with a bang against Bellevue East. Play like this would play for us! Let's go! Give it to Dunning, wanting the left side. Got some blockers out in front. Has some running room. Has the first down for the Islanders as he gets it on the 15, down close to the 13-yard line. Evans keeps heading towards the right side. He's going to go in on touch. Touchdown, Islanders. Hatcher rolling left. Getting pressured and he's gonna go down! Lay the way, go! Matter Naraki with the line drive kick once again. Nord Hughes eludes a couple of tackles, has some blocking in front, heading up the right side. Has some room at the 50, the 40, 30, got another block, pushed out of bounds at the 20 yard line. What a return! I will Nord Hughes. Evans looking, has time, looks off right side, pass complete. He's going to get in there. He and Wendling. Touchdown, Islander. <laughs> Bellevue East trying to see if they can't go for it and fourth down, and the Islanders were ready. Defense, bro. Come on. on I get so bored when we're on defense. I should just start signaling random <laughs> just to stay busy.
Give it off to Timo Sykes, running room right side, he's gonna get in there! Timo Sykes, touchdown, Highlander! 6.57 to play in the first half, it's Grand Allen 28, Bellevue is nothing. Islanders with two wide receivers to the right side, Evans does want to throw, pump short, going long, looking over the top, Nordhue, that's the five, takes it in, touchdown, Islander. 10.07 left to play in the third quarter. Islanders 42, Bellevue East nothing. This is Islanders football on the KRGI Sports Network. Ahoya with the little swing pass to would take Maho. He's headed for the corner. He's gonna get in there. Touchdown, Islanders. Big win for the Islanders as they wrap up the regular season home schedule tonight, bouncing Bellevue East by a final score of 49 to seven. All right, seniors, great night for you. Great leadership, proud as heck of you. Young guys came in and did some really good things. Okay, overall, great effort. Now, we got a lot to play for. We got Sophies getting ready to play for an undefeated season. Coming up Tuesday. Okay? Yeah. We gotta we gotta earn our stripes. We're playing for a playoff berth against an arch rival. Southeast is an arch rival. So it's a huge game. So we gotta make sure that we're locked into that this weekend. There's a lot of other good stuff going on. We gotta make great choices. We gotta make great choices. 9 a.m. stretch. Proud of you. Great job. Hey right, boys, guess who's out of retirement? Where's pregame speech? Let's hear it. What do you got to say? Let's go mess him up. Woo! John, tell us, what's it like to be starting running back for Grand Island Senior High? <laughs> oh, you excited for tonight's game? Yeah. <laughs> game day. Hey, right, Lilway, show us some of your moves, bro. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, oh. Eric Allen, how hey, you doing, up? buddy? What's up? What's it like to be the starting right guard for Grand Island Senior High? Feels good. Feels good. Oh yeah. What are your predictions on today's game? He's not you good. Win <laughs> I am vlogging. Yes. Let's go speak to the famous Colton Keezer, starting middle linebacker, Grand Island Senior High. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ah. What do you got predictions for tonight's game? I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Yeah, coming out on top, though. We know that. Ooh. Take no L's. Right now, what's hey, up, my man? What's up? Woo, baby. Hey, Jack. Ah. Oh, oh, that blonde magic. Oh, God, it off, but I thought just giving you my idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. What you got there? Just a rush, bro. Oh, yeah, baby. Free game meal. Gang, gang, gang. Okay, okay. Pre-game meal. What is it? BMT. Can I have a bite? Go ahead. Jack. Oh yeah, pickles. Okay, so first thing on the list, apple. Apple. One of those a day. Keep the doctors away. Very good on injury resistance. Uh, Ovita. <laughs> good source of energy. <laughs> this is Pars. Sweet and salty trail mix. Sweet and salty trail mix. That's, that, that describes that describes Riley because he's like sweet and salty. Sweaty. Go go behind us. This is my friend. Jack's meat, Jack meat and cheese. <laughs> Jack's meat. It's just a classic. <laughs> Jack's meat and cheese. Beef, the and cheese. It's beef and cheese. These are hand prepared yeah. sliders. Very essential. Who made, who made these? Very cost, Terry Douglas. Terry Douglas. Shout out to Artisan my man. behind me is Alpha. Yeah, Alpha Douglas good. prepared this meal. Alpha Douglas prepared this meal. So shout out Terry Douglas. Oh, we all taking to this place. Yeah. Let's go one wrapper. Five out of five. Oh, your hands all made it. One item that everybody will always remember is when we lost Nick uh, unexpectedly. And uh, that impacted, you know, not just the senior class, but the whole team as a whole. But, you know, 
you and I both know that you, you know when someone close to you is missing. And I think that was always something that was on a lot of people's heart. And I think it was on their heart this senior year because it was, you know, there's, there's one guy missing here. And so they would carry him in a different way. This is a playoff game. Got it. And that's the way we approached it as coaches. That's the way we drove you in practice, and that's the way you responded as athletes, right? So this is, this is a playoff edge that we have now. And that's the first key. Have a playoff edge, okay? Earn your stripes. Earn them damn things. Earn that GI, okay? And play together one heartbeat. Play together. Be an energy giver. Lift each other up, okay? And keep coming at them. Just keep coming at them, little pat. Okay? Uncommon effort. Effort that a normal person would say, that's just too much. That's just right for us. It's too tough for them, it's just right for us. We're right where we want to be. We're right where we want to be, man. Take a knee, let's go. Let's go. He brought a lot of energy and, uh, and courage, knowing that we aren't going to take crap from anyone and we're playing for him. I, I thought about Nick every practice, every every game. Again, clearly the favorites and you look across their lineup and it's like, okay, that's division one, that's division one. <laughs> you know, you're looking, okay, all right, it's they they're, they're they're Goliath, I get it. We're David, I get it. I accept my role as David and you're Goliath. But I'm pretty dang good at the slingshot. Uh, so you might want to strap it on and be ready. And that's kind of how it turned out. I, and you watch the demeanor of, of the Southeast kids and they're frustrated. It's like, there's a bunch of ankle biters out here. How can this be? Do you not know who's recruiting me right now? That was the best part of it, is just watching us, watching our little guys fight like badgers, not really caring who you are or who's recruiting you or how many stars next to your name and what your record is or didn't matter. I'm gonna take the fight to you and like I said, I'm gonna win this play and you can think what you want to when you go back to your huddle, but I'm probably gonna win the next play too. So, <laughs> that was just perfect, I thought very poetic. I think they know too, dealing with Nick and those other losses. Sometimes you just have to win the next 15 minutes. Just, just win the next 15 minutes, and then you can draw your line and then win the next 15, and that translated pretty well in that game. We just wanted to play for him. As a team, as a group, we wanted to have a big brotherhood and we wanted to dedicate it to Nick. Denlison will try to drive this into the ground to achieve the high bounce. Andrew Bardalis seals it up at the 47-yard line. Great job by Bardalis. He's 6'5" and looked like Derek Jeter at shortstop the way he fielded that. The Islanders are able to come up with a safety and a score in the second half after Southeast had rallied to tie it. And the Islanders lock up a playoff spot as they down Southeast by a final score of 16 to 13. Definitely best 11, right? Definitely one heartbeat best 11. Couldn't be prouder of you. That's a way to battle the whole 48 minutes. Good job. Take a knee, guys. Good job, bro. Uh, we want to thank you for your commitment, your hard work. It's uncommon what what you do. It's uncommon um, how we do it. It's all common. We ask you to be uncommon, and you do, and you are. And so we want to thank you for that. Um, you've been an outstanding group to work with from the time you were young all, all the way through. And, um, you know, you got a special place in our heart uh, as a staff and, and in mine as a head coach for sure. Um, what would be some things that you would say 
you could pass on to the next group as far as wisdom that you've learned this year. When you're sophomore, junior, it's like that, that leadership stuff, that's going to be easy. When we get up there, well, you, you quickly find out the leadership's pretty damn hard. And what, what the goal of, is, is, is of our program, one of the goals is to help. It's leadership training for all of you. It's, it's leadership training is what it is, because you're going to have to be a leader of yourself. You're going to have to be a leader of your family. Uh, you may be asked to be a leader of men in the military, okay? A uh, leader of, uh, of a company, um, leader of, uh, of a city. Maybe, maybe, or, or, or a leader of a state, who knows? Maybe a national leader, you, you're gonna be a leader uh, in some way. And so it's our hope that we prepared you a little bit, you know, or a lot, for the challenges that are gonna be looming ahead for you. But what we want you to do is tackle leadership. Be leaders, be a leader in your church, okay? Be a leader in your neighborhood, okay? Be the guy that takes the initiative in your neighborhood. Be a leader, obviously, in your family of your of your kids, and um, be a leader in their school. Be a leader, you know, wherever you can make an impact. Be a leader. And if, if there's anything I can I can uh, testify to the fact is, I think we have a pretty good track record that way. If you look, yeah, there's been some there's been some some disappointments along the road, but overall, you know, when I look back throughout the years and I look at what guys are doing now and I look at what kind of impact they're making, it makes me really proud that we were able to at least do a little part. A lot of it's your parents and I know that and you have great parents and a lot of it's yourself. Uh, but hopefully a little bit's our program that, that has helped prepare you. So um, ways that you can encourage this next group would be from lessons that you've learned in leadership that maybe caught you off guard, maybe a little bit unprepared. Each group, you know, I can remember, wow, I can remember uh, Grant, Bedner, and Kevin, and Pierce, and Blaine, and Jimmer. Those were our five squad leaders, I think, that year, right, Coach? I think that's what, that, those were our main ones. We may have one or two more, but those are the guys that took initiative on everything. There were some times they came in He's like, Coach, what can we do here? So, you, you know, it's not, even even you get, it uh, doesn't matter what group you get, there always comes, things come in, come in your way or barriers that you gotta figure out how to get over. And hopefully that, you figured out that is a part of our curriculum. That's, that's what we are. That's what we do. So, uh, well done in every way, shape and form. Well done. And we had a lot of great practice players. A lot of tremendous guys in this room that gave of themselves 100% total selflessness, knew the odds of themselves getting on the field were going to be slim, and stuck it out anyway. That's that's courage. I mean, that's amazing. Uh, and, and the fact that we get that kind of buy-in makes you know again it makes me pretty proud. Um, very proud of you guys, and and we can't thank you enough. Um, third thing I always remind you, set new goals right away, right away, right away. You got to set new goals. You, life goes on, right? It sucks that our season's over. We want it to go on. We want to be practicing. We want to be playing. We get that. But life does go on and it goes at breakneck speed and you get swept up under the tank treads if you don't set new goals, academic goals, set them. If this is somewhat a, a crossroads for you athletically, maybe you're done athletically, then it's academically how to finish strong. What's the next thing I'd do? Save money for college, getting ready for the military. Uh, whatever it is, set new goals and put them before you right away. I can tell you guys that don't do that struggle mightily. They struggle. And you, you've seen guys before you, that have gone before you, that have struggled, that have got run over by the tank treads because they didn't do that one simple thing. Hey, let's reevaluate where I'm at, okay? And let's set new goals 
and let's go full speed ahead at doing the same thing we just got done doing. I expect you to do the same thing you've been doing, only toward a different goal, whatever it might be. That could be military, it could be toward college, it could be toward your next sport if you're a winter sport guy. Pour all your stuff into the winter sport and your academics and your college preparation and all that. But I do want to encourage you, and that's where, you know, because we're so intense for so long, you know, when you figure in off season and winter, spring and summer and all that we do, when it comes to an end, it's like there's a big void that's got to be filled. Well, you got to fill it with positive. And that's, that's setting new goals and setting a new standard for yourself and immersing yourself in it. If you set idle for too long, you know, then homeostasis takes place, right? You always settle back into that comfort zone and you don't want comfort zone. You just fought through being in a comfort zone. So set new goals. I will, I will encourage you to do that and I can sit down with you anytime and, and help you out with that. Um, let us know how we can help you. Whether it be writing you letters of recommendation, job recommendations, job references, um, college applications, um, helping your college football, pursue college football or another sport. Let us know how we can help you. And I guarantee our staff will be there for you. We'll do whatever we can do for you for as long as we can do it. Okay, for as long as we can do it. You, you have our pledge on that. Um, we're your coaches forever, right? Not just for, well, he's my coach in high school. No, I'll still be your coach when I'm old and walking with the cane. Um, and, and I'll be your friend, you know, which is the coolest thing of all. Because I just gained, you know, not only do we get athletes to go through, but we gain friends for life. We gain family, so, and uh, that's 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 another cool thing about it. Um, but let us know how we can help you. Stay connected. Keep your group connected. That's one of the cool things about high school athletics. And uh, keep stay connected. Stay together. You know, have each other's back. Be concerned about each other. Help each other out. Uh, that's a true measure of a team. If the team ends today, then we didn't do very good forming the team that the team can't end today. The team's always going to be there, just how close you want it to be. Okay? And when you least expect it, trust me on this, when you least expect it, you're going to have teammates there from this team in this room. They're going to have your back years down the road and you never would have thought it. When you never would have thought it. My dad died five years ago. That's a big deal. My dad was my hero. My dad is still my hero. He's extremely close to my dad. And I hadn't seen some of my high school teammates, because we played everything together. Football, basketball, track, baseball, we played it all. And at my dad's funeral, when I looked back, and I saw about 15 of them there. 15 teammates from all over the country. And we may not have talked for five years. They were there. They were there. That's 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 pretty deep. That's pretty cool stuff. So you think about, you know, all you've been through together, how hard you've trained together, you know, stay stay with each other, have each other's back, and, and those connections are for a lifetime. It always seems like it's forever away. And that you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life is what it feels like, because that's all your life, your whole four years of high school. And then when it comes to an end, it's kind of crazy. It's You don't feel it. It's I mean, you don't believe that's true. It's like, oh, okay, we got to film the next morning, then where are we playing next week? we got to prepare for them, and we'll beat them next, next week. But there never is another next week or another, another practice or game. It didn't hit me till the next day. I was actually vacuuming. <laughs> And I just kind of like started bawling because I realized I'm never going to have spring off season or winter off season and challenges with my friends, you know, all them fun times. That's when it hit me because I was, I'm going to miss the brotherhood the most and it just feels empty inside. That feeling didn't really hit me 
until I was on the bus back, and I was just thinking, like, oh my god, like I'm ne I'm never gonna play this game like this with this other team again, and it kind of hit me really hard. I remember seeing Coach Joe Wells, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and then that's when I just let it all out and gave him a big hug, and that's when it really hit me, knowing that I'm never gonna put on another pair of cleats or strap up the helmet. It was a shared experience that I wouldn't have gone through with any other group of people. Those guys are my brothers forever and uh, love them. There's going to be times where I look back and just remember the great moments I shared with my friends, my family, on and off the field. The brotherhood we made, um, everything that goes with it, I mean lifelong friends, you do anything for the guy next to you. There are great things in their future. I look across the board, all these seniors, regardless of, of where they fit on the team, it's like, man, what, what a great bunch of kids. And just keep on doing what we've done for four years, which is draw the line and conquer the next feet and go and, and move forward. And, and I'm, I'm excited for them, but I want them to remember that and to, and to continue to fight that fight every day. But, but be proud of who you are, because you have done so much more than I think you even thought you could when you started as freshman. Okay, Coach Harv, remember this? Remember this? Junior year, we're playing a uh, scout team, and Coach Harv throws a bullet, and I'm on defense, and I decide to swat the ball, point at the ball, goes like this, it breaks my finger. Like, look at this. Like, this does not look right. See this? It's freaking crooked. Come on, Coach Harv. But I still love you, Coach Harv. You're the best. Masters, Julio, Blue Eyes. Can I always say low? Yes, yes, we need to know our levels. I'm gonna go job shadow a bunion rubber at Henry Dorley. <laughs> <laughs> You're a week early. <laughs> You're not supposed to be out here at 3.30 a.m. next Monday when we're out here. Put it in your locker? Yeah, sure. Don't make fun. Why can't you put it in your locker? You want to say something funny? But damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs>
I drank a lot of water. It was really watered down. If you're filming right now, it's 